Good evening, traders. Matrix here, and here's my watch list for January 18th. Okay, so looking at the SPY futures right now, this is the five minute chart. Um, today we tested the highs, uh, broke new highs on the SPY, okay, and uh, after hours it uh, continued to run up, even though uh, right before the close uh, we did get a sell off. Um, at the new day, we gapped down very slightly from the close, but we are still holding uh, the highs here at around the 2640 area. So I do expect that um, tomorrow the SPY is just going to continue on this uptrend. Um, let's mark off a trend line here real quick for you. Okay, so as you can see from here, uh, probably line it up. So something like that. And it's following the uptrend line pretty well. So uh, I do expect uh, the SPY to continue this uptrend. Um, does that mean that we are, uh, we are out of bear territory? I can't make that call right now. I mean, personally, I still have a little bit of uh, short bias on the overall market. I mean, until it can actually get over these type of resistance areas and then starts pull back and holding uh, I I'm still gonna hold on to my uh, short thesis on the spy but if I'm gonna bring in bring the spy in right now I mean as you can see each day these days are very slowly grinding up okay uh, we still have an yet another level of resistance to conquer right uh, I would say 265 is pretty key right because it's a key psychological whole number it's a nice five dollar mark um it has shown us today that it held the 260 so uh this is a cleared level in my opinion for now okay um so the spy it does look bullish okay it does look bullish but i'm not i'm going to reserve judgment and not say that uh the rally is in right um it's still to me, just a basic retracement. I mean, compared to this down move from the 280s back up, uh, we are a little bit around the 50%, maybe a little bit more. So um, depending on what it does around this 265, maybe it gets over, maybe it doesn't. Um, I'm still looking, I'm still very careful on the long positions. And uh, just to keep in mind and be prepared that at any single point in time, uh, if our president or if Donald Trump tweets out something stupid, um, the basically the the market can pull and it can pull really, really hard. So if you are playing long, um, I, I'm not saying don't play long. I'm saying if you are playing long, uh, you need to be very careful with these long plays. Um, more treat them more of like a short-term scalp maybe for a few points and then get the hell out uh leave a very small piece on um i wouldn't be swinging a long position right now it's just not uh it's just not safe yet i mean if anything i would rather be more short bias and be ready for that short once i see the topping action with that said um let's bring in a few tickers for tomorrow uh i have one two three four four main tickers that i'm watching tomorrow uh first up is team team okay now uh you can't see it on the daily chart i don't think let me see here yeah you can't see it on daily chart but team uh basically announced earnings after hours and it pops uh massive it popped like five percent or something like that and uh it's a positive earnings reaction right uh, we have the highs here at 103.34. Uh, what I want to talk about is this is 52-week highs, new 52-week highs, right? So what's uh, with brand new 52-week highs, I tend to like to keep a, sh a long bias on it. It's very dangerous to short uh, when the stock is running into 50, one, uh, breaking out into 52-week highs. Um, it's just not a smart play to be trying to short something like that, especially it's got a positive earnings catalyst on it. Um, maybe tomorrow we might get some analysts coming in, chiming in on uh, on putting another uh, buy rating on it and causes the thing to run up even more. Now, of course, this gap up is uh, makes the stock automatically overextended. So, um 
Yes, the short thesis is there, but that's the only ingredient that we have for a short thesis though. So I am leaning more towards a long. So how would I long this? Uh, first of all, I would look for support, which is a very key psychological whole number of 100, okay? Uh, the stock basically shot up from 93 and uh, hit a top of 103. We saw some uh, profit taking already and then uh, it held the 100 and then it bounced from there. Currently, we are sitting at 102. Tomorrow at the open, I am looking for a dip at the open, uh, more profit taking. And uh, I wanna see 100 hold. Okay, if 100 holds and uh, forms a higher low or a double bottom from there, I want to long it from the 100 and bring it back to the first target of 103. Um, from here, will I short the double top? It's a really tough play. I will take a majority of my profits off at 103 if I do get into this trade, okay? And, uh, and just leave it on. I mean, it does have a potential to squeeze. Um, I believe, let's check the short interest real quick here. Uh, just give me a quick second. Uh, short interest for TEAM is 45, 46%. Okay, so it does have a little bit more potential to squeeze as well. Uh, for the past few days, we see that it's been selling off and short sellers are probably piled in. Some short sellers are probably piled in, right? Uh, from here, we might have this 92 pop today uh, is probably short sellers covering, but then we do have some stubborn shorts still uh, piling in or selling the stock. Okay. So these guys are in pain. Uh, after hours, I don't know if people actually are dumb enough to short this high or short around here. So we'll really have to see, but I am expecting a dip out the gates. First of all, because of two things, because it's overextended, because uh, the second thing is because um, we have overnight buyers and earning scamblers taking profits. So I do expect that dip uh, out the gates. Uh, I really want to see 100 hold. If 100 doesn't hold, it'll, it'll probably come back down, I guess, test this high right here. Uh, uh, initially when it first announced earnings around the 99 area, but I want to see 100 hold. Um, if it doesn't hold, it drops, I'll wait until it finds a bottom and then uh, I'll long from there, right? Um, I don't see it fill the gap the whole way because it's, it's a positive earnings reaction, right? It's a good catalyst. Basically, the news changes the the stock and the company fundamentally. Okay, so investors' view will definitely change from there. I don't see it fill, fill the gap. And uh, for an added bonus, I mean, if tomorrow we do get an analyst coming out and giving it a buy rating, more reason to long this. Okay, so 52-week uh, highs, lots of shorts piled in, uh, positive earnings reactions, nice psychological whole number as a support, all these ingredients uh, points to a long for me, and uh, I am looking for uh, another rip, uh, a dip and a rip for TEAM. Next up, we have uh, Skechers SKX. Okay, so uh, Skechers, uh, let's go to some fundamentals first. So um, currently, the resistance I see is at $28, a key psychological whole number. You're gonna mark that off on the daily chart. And the support I see is at 2660s to 2675. So let's mark that off right here. The 60s and the 2675 around here. Now, why, why the support zone? Um, very simple. I mean, we got to see it on the intraday chart right now. So I want to mark that off 26. 60s and 26.75. Okay, so we have a very concise support zone that I have found. And how did I find the support is basically you see the multiple bottoms here at the end of the day and where it bounces, that's a, that's a support zone. Uh, moreover, I went and added a little bit of 
extra, I went and played with Fibonacci's today uh, when I was looking at this chart. So just uh, mark that off. Okay. And uh, let's see if I can take these lines off real quick and show you where the 50% mark is here. Okay. So 50% mark. Uh, I know it's hard to see. It's yellow. Hold on. Move this line as well. Okay, it's yellow, it's hard to see, but it's right here. It's 2658, uh, the way I plotted this fib. Okay, it might be off a little bit, but interestingly enough, it's exactly at the 2660s right here, as you can see, right? And this is where it bounced. Okay, so very interesting that the fibs line right up at the 50% mark. Um, typically, uh, on the stock that just broke out, it's supposed to pull back uh, by textbook. It's supposed to pull back 50% before the next run, right? And this is exactly what the stock did. It pulled back to the 50%, held, and then ripped again. Uh, well, it hasn't started ripping again, but I am anticipating another rip again. Um, looking at the daily chart, what this actually did was basically a breakout today of the 2620 area, okay? So let's take a look at this. And to explain this move, uh, this is basically a squeeze of the day, right? Uh, 2620s, you see the short sellers from uh, back, way back here. Uh, they basically hammered it in. And as soon as the stock broke out of this 2620s area, the stock just squeezed on up to the $28 mark. Uh, I want to take a look here at the intraday to one minute chart and you'll see exactly where it happened, right? So if I mark off 2620s, see this candle where it popped through and then once it held, boom, right up, right? Um, so that would explain why the stock ran today. Now, there is a downtrend line that I want to plot. No, it's right here. This is the downtrend line. that I want to plot, right? Let's see, right here. Linking to that and that, okay. That's the downtrend line that I want to plot. Uh, the stock is following this trend line from here, this major high, and then another major high. And then today it hit once again, another major high. So 28 mark key psychological whole number as well as resistance. What I want to see right now, the stock is currently holding at 27. I want to see a dip and a rip, okay? The average true range is a dollar. I want to see a dip to hold this 2670s to 2660s area. And then from here, I want to see like another double bottom and then a rip back up to test the target of 28 once more. Um, will it be able to break 28? We don't know yet. I know that if it starts holding this 2660 though, and it fails to uh, come down, all these shorts here will be uh, shit in their pants and they might start to cover. And from there, I want to try to get in as soon as possible. From there, I want to take this first uh, a red to green and then a short squeeze back up. And from the 28, I don't know if it can get over. I'm hoping it will. Uh, we will have to see from there. Uh, I also want to mention that the short interest for the stock is 73.86%. So lots of shorts piled in, very high interest, very easy for this stock to squeeze. Okay. Um, if it gaps up tomorrow, uh, because the market does look very strong, if it gaps up tomorrow, I want to see it gap up over this 27, right? Uh, ideally, I want to see on a perfect situation, I want to see a, a little run up uh, in the pre-market and get above the 2750 area, okay? I basically want to see uh, a gap up above here, a dip, and then a hold. Then this would actually guarantee that uh, come 28, the thing will squeeze, okay? Uh, but if it gaps down or if it opens flat, then I'm going to expect to sell off a dip and hold and then rip. Um, 2750 is 
is a target area for payments. So pay yourself at twenty-seven fifty. So let's mark that off. See how twenty-seven fifty? It's a uh, very matching with this uh, December third green candle here. The the lows of that. So I like that. And that's basically uh, my thesis on SKX. Will I short the stock? Maybe, maybe. But knowing that uh, prior resistance now becomes support, how far down can it go, right? Um, we broke out of the 2620s. So this is major support where it broke out. Um, we are holding the 50% retracement mark, okay? So how far can it go? I don't want to short this until it gets really high, uh, perhaps a triple top at the 28. Then I might short it. It, it has to show me a sign of rejection first though. So uh, from 28, I might short it down. We will see, okay, SKX. Next up we have FAST. FAST is an earnings positive reaction. Um, some fundamentals, first of all, average true range is $1.62 and the short interest is 82%. So once again, very, very high short interest in the stock. It does have a potential to squeeze. We have a positive earnings catalyst here uh, today, this morning. And uh, basically it just squeezed from there and it kept running. Tomorrow, if an analyst comes out with a buy rating, even better. Um, this will definitely squeeze then. What I want to see is a dip and a rip. So if it holds this 57 area, okay, uh, key psychological hole number, and uh, on the daily chart, you can see that it is actually kind of key support here, uh, then I want to long it, okay? And I want to, I want to, uh, long it and I'm expecting it to squeeze from this 57.5 area and my target is actually 58s and uh, a little bit more 58.50s, right? So I want to see a dip and rip. It might dip a little bit more down to the VWAP area here at 56.50s. So uh, the 57 has to prove to me that it's holding. So it's got to do like a, make like a double bottom or a higher low from there. And then uh, I'll, I'll long it from there, okay? Um, yeah, that's FAST. And finally, we have Roku. Roku chart. Uh, I like this chart. This is a very interesting chart. It's basically, uh, it shot up from here, uh, got overextended to the 44 mark and sold off, but then it started to consolidate and chop around, right? Uh, right here, this candle, this is an inverted hammer candle, okay, as it's coming down to the low and it's about to reverse. In my opinion, it looks like it's about to reverse. It's the same pattern that we can actually see from here, right? So the stock basically sold down a lot and then we get this inverted hammer candle. The next day it uh, dipped and ripped. Um, this would have been a fantastic long day and then this happened, right? Now it's the same thing. We have a pop, drop, inverted hammer, and rip. Um, what this is, is very subtle. We see higher lows, higher lows here. Uh, we have a bullish engulfing candle closing today. Um, we also see uh, very subtle higher highs as well, right, for the, pri for the past few days. And coupled with the SPY being just very tad bullish, I do expect this uh, stock to run tomorrow. Now, how will it run though? Uh, first of all, the short interest for Roku is 60%, so it does have um, a probability to squeeze, a very high chance to squeeze. Uh, the way I want to long the stock, I need to see 41 hold, all right? I need to see 41 to 40, 80 area hold really well. So if I scroll back a little, you see, this is basically the support area. Um, if 41 holds, uh, I'm gonna anticipate, basically it's this area right here. Actually 4130s, okay? So we are at 4120, so a little bit down here, right? 41 needs to hold, and then uh, I wanna long it from there. 
and then anticipate the squeeze after uh, the 42 break. So what this 42 is, is basically the line in the sand for the short sellers, in my opinion, because uh, for the past few days, uh, that's where the shorts have been piling in, right? I mean, they piled in from here and from here. I think uh, now that it's testing, it's a key psychological number. If it breaks out, then it's good. Um, and my target would definitely be 44 again, maybe a little bit higher, but 44 is my target. From there, will it continue? We don't know. Uh, looking at this run up day here, 42 is a very key mark. It's basically kind of like the closing price of this run up day. And uh, yeah, that's my plan on it. It's a long for me. And uh, today it held on the 9 EMA as well. So a dip and a rip. That's my plan on Roku. So that's my watch list for this evening. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy what you watch. I understand it's a little longer than usual, but uh, notice that I have gone very, very in depth on four tickers with um, uh, my concise plan to play it. Uh, I know I did not talk about Netflix. Uh, and yes, Netflix does have a major catalyst on it. Um, the reason why I didn't put Netflix on my watch list is because uh, the earnings reaction is, is pretty mixed, right? They have bad guidance, but they're, they're coming out with news pieces telling people that uh, their subscription growth is still growing and they're uh, looking forward to uh, a 13% operating margin for the year of. Uh, of uh, two, 2019 and stuff like that. So overall, the the reaction is a little bit mixed in my opinion. This major gap down to me seems all too familiar from what happened in July, right? This here on this candle uh, in July, let's zoom in a little bit. This is an earnings gap down and basically it dipped, held and ripped all day. Right? And they didn't even come out with a good earnings report this day. I remember very clearly. And it actually got a lot of people with short biases on it. Um, yes, it's a major gap down. Um, I want to watch. I mean, if I were to play this, the only way I want to short it is if it pops back up to 246. And uh, from here, I might attempt a short what 246 is, is the prior three days lows. So 347, 346. I mean, if I were to pick a number out, go right to the middle, go to 346.50s, right? Oh, even 347. So yeah, I mean, if it pops back up to 346, 347, I'll look for a short from there. Uh, I don't think it can get back up to its prior glory for the past three days because it is very overextended and uh, this is kind of like a negative earnings reaction. From there, uh, I, would, I would expect to short it and, and just not be greedy and pay myself around this low area of 336 to 334, right? Um, interestingly, I wanna, I wanna show you guys what 334 is. I found this. Uh, while I was looking at the chart here, 334, let's see, let me mark that off. Okay, so it's basically all this junk right here, right? We have clear prior resistance at 334. This is where it bounced off of, right? Uh, zooming back a year, look at that here, uh, look at that here. And then this is also a breakout point right here. Um, last year, right? 334, look at this, right? Right there, right there. So 334, pretty strong. Uh, I don't think it can get under it. It's also the 200 SMA as well. So if I'm gonna play this, if I have to play this, I'm waiting for a pop back up into this area and I'll just play this this whole area right here. I want to short this area. That's it. And that's my play because the 9 EMA is coming up as well. And 
this is a major support area at 334. So I do think it will put up a fight. Uh, if you're shorting from here, is very dangerous in my opinion. So definitely no short at the lows, only short at the pops. And uh, that's my thesis on Netflix. So anyways, uh, once again, thanks for watching my watch list. Uh, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys out bright and early tomorrow. Cheers.